Ahojte druháci, a vítam vás na dnešnej hodine. No a skúste hádať sami pre seba na základe pár indícií, že čo ideme dnes preberať. Prvou indíciou je obraz, jeden zo štyroch obrázkov, ktorý vám nakreslila naša Sandra. Takže niečo tam máte. Toto by vám tiež mohlo naznačiť, asi čo ideme preberať. No a keď prejdeme túto prvú časť, úvodu do tejto témy, tak sa budeme venovať tomuto predmetu výskumu, ktorý tu máme, a takémuto vývoju. Sandra bude mať 7 rokov o chvíľu, takže toto je jedna verzia. No ak vám ešte teraz nedoplo, tak vám ešte pustím jednu verziu, ktorú ste asi druhá väčšina videli tiež. No asi už viete, o čom, o čom to je, o čom to bude. Na zadanie, ktoré dostanete, tu druhú časť zadania, ktorá bude o tejto téme, možno aj toto videjko vám dám, aby ste popísali jednotlivé fázy tohto vývoja alebo evolúcie. Možno aj mouse. No a toto už bude druhý a tretí ročník. A štvrták. Did you bring the milk? Did you bring the milk? <laughs> Dobre, takže viete asi všetci, decka, tento pekný úvodík, že teda ideme dnes preberať pravek. Ja budem podľa prezentácie, ktorú máte uploadovanú na Logical Geography, Serial... Uh, uh, serial Art Historical History uh, Nemáte k tomu uh, Wordové poznámky Ako ste mali v tej prvej téme Je to iba prezentácia Takže textu je, textu je pomerne málo A uh, budem uh, uh, Budem sa snažiť Možno rozprávať tak, aby vám dávali tie veci Zmysel, uh, pretože Často sú to také základné kľúčové slova No a ako vidíte, tak táto téma bude taká trošku bilingválna. Prvú časť pôjdeme po anglicky, keďže sa budeme venovať globálnym dejinám. Nechcem povedať svetovým, pretože na začiatku budeme hovoriť o úplne iných veciach, v podstate o vesmíre. To vám môžem ešte ukázať tiež. V podstate už sme mali, už sme mali preberať tieto veci s vašimi kolegovcami, s vašimi kolegovcami z druhou D, ktorí to pozerajú toto tiež zo záznamu. No a v podstate ešte som nemal hlas pred dvomi dňami vôbec. Dúfam, že dnes vydržím. Dúfam, že dnes teda vydržím. No a dostal nejaké videjka, ktoré vám určite zavesím do do toho zadania, aby ste si ich mohli všetci pozrieť a po prípade ho spracovať History of the Earth and How did life begin by a Chinese No a chvíľku práve k tomuto prídem k týmto veciam, ktoré tu máme No a ešte sa pozriem, koľko máme Dobre, čiže 4 minútky, aby som si vedel ostupovať čas tú hodinku a nejako to nepre, nepredložil a Po slovensky prepneme potom druhej časti tejto prezentácie, ktorá sa bude venovať slovenským dejinám, respektíve slovensku v praveku. No a tam pôjdeme zase naopak, aby ste si možno oprašili slovnú zásobu, tak budete mať niektoré veci vysvetlené potom v angličtine, pretože nie sú bežné, ako názvy napríklad niektorých archeologických kultúr z doby bronzovej, ktoré sú pritom veľmi významné. Dobre, I think let's start from the beginning. Uh, let's start from the beginning. So prehistory uh, is one of the periods that we learned from the beginning and uh, it was the main periodization um, and we know why it's called prehistory because uh, there uh, were not any written sources, only archaeological or any others. Of course, main studying materials, main sources for you should be our um, history books um, in Slovak, of course. Uh, unfortunately, even those we, uh, that are in English for Slovak uh, grammar schools, uh, they don't contain this topic. Um, 
it's not compulsory, but in my opinion, I think it's one of the crucial parts how to know the beginnings, not only of humankind, but also of other ethno-linguistic groups that we call today the nations. Uh, many of Some of you may go studying archaeology just like Kubo Senashi from, uh, from the previous year, who uh, was accepted to Oxford. Okay, so let's start uh, from the beginning. Uh, I'm sorry for covering uh, covering uh, some part f with my face. I can actually erase my face, but you cannot do this. I uh, can read it, so uh, sometimes I do this, but uh, sorry for covering all this part. So let's start from the beginning. If uh, <laughs> and that's the question, where is the beginning? Um, in this case. Um, we cannot talk only about humans, you know, because when we try to talk who were the first humans, we realize probably there was something between humans and primates, primati, called Australopithecus uh, in Latin. And uh, even before that, so probably the history of humankind is so uh, uh, connected with the history of animals and also history of the space, uh, living space, uh, including plants and trees and uh, water and presence of atmosphere at our planet actually plays we stay the pl uh, the planet uh, earth in this case and of course uh, why how can planet earth uh, survive in this way's case of our solar system with our star uh, with the sun and <laughs> sun is still the part of the whole universe so in this way when try to come to the beginning uh, we need to ask the thing two things which are important in here uh, one is uh, when the life uh, when the life emerged for the first time uh, in in the earth and you will see that probably we have to look more around uh, the universe around then about its evolution uh, I can tell you one thing that uh, we do not know we don't know. It doesn't mean that uh, we cannot know because it's uh, incomprehensible, incompre but because it is probably very far beyond uh, to travel and to get a proof, to get evidence about this. In this case, there in this case there are only uh, theories of emergence of life uh, that uh, uh, try to explain how life uh, spread it around uh, the places. And planets and uh, how can evolve uh, how can develop in this form how we know it today uh, let's start from one of the most probable that uh, also you will watch the video uh, about this it's called abiogenesis slubil som vám viackrát že vás naučím po latinské a po grecky tak poďme trošku z grečtiny keď sa v grečtine niečo začína na a an, ante znamená to proti alebo to neguje to zápor bio bios po grecky znamená život takže a bios neživot genesis je grecké slovo ale hebrejského pôvodu prenesené do latinčiny a znamená stvorenie a vznik, čiže vznik života, ne, ne života, alebo vznik ne života. What does it mean? It's actually very nice, uh, very nice metaphor. Uh, what means that a biological life as we know it, so this bio, this bio, arises, was created or emerged, so genesis, okay, uh, rised or arises from inorganic matter. A part of chemistry, inorganic, it's something that is non-living, like maybe stone, okay? Something that does not die, that does not reproduce itself, and doesn't possess this uh, reproduction pro, uh, character or feature. Uh, this inorganic matter, in this case, you know that you know, know that from Mendeleev uh, chart um, and of elements, and in this case, uh, they are not living, each of their own, for carbonium or hydrogenium, oxygen, they don't live. And uh, this theory says, uh, claims that somehow, through the natural processes, where obviously amino acids, amino kyseliny, that are present in uh, volcanoes under the deep oceans, where the early bacteria can still survive and probably can simulate uh, the... Um, climate and the conditions at the early earlier periods of uh, the planet uh, earth uh, actually survived so that makes many scientists believe that it is possible that somehow from uh, these kind of inorganic matters 
uh, under the pressure and heat, suddenly a moment started that these matters together started to create uh, amino acids and from these amino acids uh, suddenly some, not suddenly, but gradually uh, some organic things were created, some early bacteria and they could reproduce themselves and also they were dying and these are two main features of life. This sounds incredible I would say but uh, as you will see we don't have many other or many better options. For example when we have abiogenesis that life arises from unorganic inorganic matter, what about biogenesis? Life arises from another living form well, that sounds nice, yeah. Bacteria were created some something small or maybe something other living, but that doesn't give the response doesn't doesn't give response to or answer to what had been there before before this life. So as you can see, biogenesis is only the way how this life is spreading. So it is about its maybe evolution and not about um, creation emergence. Then another this is uh, intri interesting, it's panspermia. Uh, pan in Greek, uh, it means all. Čiže po slovensku by sme pravžili pan znamená ki vše, celkový alebo zaberajúci všetko. Spermia, sperm, it means the seed. Čiže semiačko, semeno. Panspermia, it means when you spread seed all around. In this case, there is hypothesis that the life exists throughout the universe, like in many planets and comets and moons and um, uh, objects in the universe, and it is being distributed by meteors and asteroids. And as they're flying, let's say in the in the in the um, tails of the comets, when they possess, if you know, this ice core, uh, so there are some like frozen biological cells or organisms living and how this get it to or got to uh, the planet and this sounds really interesting and uh, really highly how, how possible for many many places and that would also mean that uh, that the uh, not only the earth but also many other planets can be inhabited by various biological forms Again, this panspermia, does it say anything about uh, about uh, the, what had it been before, when the first life was created or how much? No, it does not. Then there is another very interesting form that uh, is called directed panspermia. Directed panspermia is when you direct something to some uh, target, to some goal or aim. Uh, and it uh, means that the life was spread in the same way from the other parts of universe to the other parts of universe by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are laughing probably that oh, this is this is stupid like UFO and an ETLEN and these guys are bringing life and try to build colonies in other planets. But I can tell you one thing: uh, uh, has ever a human uh, got the universe and left something in the space on other like space object yeah the moon we landed on uh, we landed on the moon uh, many decades ago and we left there our like material we left there many things so and this is only a like, very short period of the history of humankind. If uh, there is another extraterrestrial civilization that is uh, advanced uh, for maybe thousands and millions of years, for them it may be much more easier, it could be much more easy for them to travel and go to other planets. Of course they may have died out, uh, but this is the, another possible way how life could have spread it around. As you can see, there is one interesting sentence written in here. The probability of existence of life in the universe is 100%. So, the probability of existence of life in the universe is 100%. What does that mean? Uh, you may not be surprised that um, if you read like the previous week that the moon got uh, also water, uh, like in the form of ice in the poles. Uh, we had known it for like 10 years that there are Mars uh, ice capes, for example, and there are actually banks of the rivers uh, that uh, used to flow there like millions and million years ago. Of course, the planet does not have any like serious atmosphere today. 
But it's obvious that water is not so unique thing as we thought like 20 years ago. And when there is water, there is possibility that life is there. Another thing is that uh, Jupiter, the biggest planet of our star constellation, um, with the uh, got a lot of moons, I think 14, and there are four big ones, Ganymedes, Europa, Io, and Callisto. And for example, this moon called Europa, it is covered by four kilometers of thick ice. And um, astro astronomers, they uh, expect that there is a huge ocean beneath, under this uh, ice cover. So there is another possibility that there are much better maybe conditions for life in many places, uh, only in our solar system. And now to guess the, that our uh, closest star, Proxima Centauri, it is like very, very far away, about like 36 uh, year lights about here. So it means if we can travel the speed of light, we can get there by in 20, 36 years. So probably <laughs> we cannot do this like in our, it probably during the life of existence of humankind and existence of planet. Uh, and if you are able to survive for these uh, billions of years, the planet Earth wouldn't survive. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if life was created in this form, and if there are like meteors in other uh, star constellations, because Proxima Centauri is like this small, and now if you compare it to the galaxy we are in here, and how many stars, you know, and in the sky you can see from three and a half thousand to five and a half thousand stars. This only what can see from one part, from one place of a. Uh, 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 of, of the Earth, but there are actually billions and billions stars, and even our galaxy is very small dot in the in the super uh, super um, uh, the super fogs galaxies and constellations that are actually billions and billions. So universe is so big that uh, mathematical probability of existence of life is one hundred percent. We are uh, the evidence. If life can exist here in the planet, so definitely there are many many other possibilities and places uh, where life can spread. The other problem is if we can get with them, if we can be in touch with them, uh, within the technological um, possibilities and time possibilities, I mean historical possibilities that was given to humankind, it is imp improbable that we can ever get to another uh, to another place with high advanced civilization, unless it is not living really in this near the Jupiter, uh, uh, because there can be many forms, and during the histories, uh, it's it's much older. You will see how long is the universe, uh, how old, pardon, is is the universe, and uh, how how huge it is. But there are some things. So it is actually another another hypothesis, uh, maybe not true. We don't know. We don't know, but it's one possible explanation for this. Okay, let's have a look at the other one, and uh, it's Darwinism. Uh, Darwinism is uh, not translated, we simply call it Darwinismus, and I shall later call translate in Slovak also the other ones. Darwinism, uh, Darwinism says that uh, uh, there is some kind of evolution and theory that uh, British um, biologist Charles Darwin, Darwin uh, described uh, according to his uh, uh, research, in, especially in the Galapagos, uh, Galapagos Islands uh, near Ecuador in the Pacific Ocean where he realized that many species um, are very different in these remote uh, secluded uh, islands uh, without predators and they completely evolved in very different forms uh, uh, which are maybe which would be like deadly in the, in the continent, but not here in these islands. Uh, he uh, developed it in the way uh, that uh, organisms are being developed from less developed organisms to highly developed organisms. Because if you don't evolve, if you don't uh, do this, so probably you will be killed by predators. He said that probably Mother Nature's doing this kind of uh, changes. Later we realize that they are called mutations, mutatsie, and they are kind of like genetical disabilities. So yeah, it's malfunction of the system, but sometimes this malfunction can actually be very useful in kinds of kind of like bigger beak for birds, uh, maybe uh, 
um, stronger uh, back legs for primates as we were for example like having claws and and so on maybe having some armor and uh, maybe some cover disguise uh, this guy's mimicry system so in this way uh, actually these like living forms are uh, living in the earth are kind of in the form of very high developed uh, form maybe we are but let's say dolphins or sharks crocodiles can be really excellent i would say mosquitoes are uh, great or flies for example ants definitely there are some estimation that uh, estimation numbers that if you wait if you put a whole humankind on the weight on a, on a, on, a, on a scale i mean to measure their weight uh there would be like only like one seventh of all the weight of all the ants uh, on the planet Earth. I don't know whether it is true or not today, but uh, another thing was that whether if this uh, directly spermia would be true, that probably UFO would contact ants, not us, as a dominant species on this planet. Unfortunately, this is probably not true anymore uh, for changing environment by humans, so this is really interesting. What does it say? Darwinism was really interesting for many people of those times because they believe that uh, it means that uh, we are not created uh, as the Bible said by the God in great perfect form how God wished it but from monkeys that would mean that probably God didn't mean it seriously or maybe the Bible was not true about that and it caused really bad, big problems and I can tell that today American uh, presidential elections are also about this how to interpret history and creation whether to believe the bible or not that's why as the opposition to darwinism another theory was created and that is called creationism teraz to preložím spätne kreacionizmus from latin creatio it means to create to make up something to že vytvoriť stvoriteľská teória it's a very easy thing that um, it is actually religious belief it doesn't have any scientific methods, any scientific uh, techniques. It is just religious belief that you can make up that uh, the human were created, sorry, uh, humans were created by a uh, supernatural being. Another Latin word, super, it means above, nad niečím. Natura, it means nature. Supernatural, nad prirodzená bytost. So, uh, in this way, uh, it's not only about the God mentioned Bible, it is also uh, like Hinduism, it was uh, Shiva and Krishna, God the creator and the destroyer. Uh, Native American Indians, uh, they believe that uh, life was created by a turtle, by a tortoise. Uh, Terry Pratchett in his book says that the whole world is being carried by uh, by a huge turtle and with four elephants and whole flat earth is about this. So actually this uh, probably was not meant by this uh, Christian fundamentalist opposers of uh, Charles Darwin to mean like this, but actually it's the same thing. So creationism as a religious belief in some countries is actually for them valid scientific method. Uh, poďme si ešte posudnú vec, kým prepnem práve na ten kreacionizmus a darwinizmus a ich uh, také rozdiely uh, na slovenský preklad. Čiže kreacionizmus, darwinová evolučná teória alebo darwinizmus u nás sa to veľmi tak nenazýva. No poďme naspäť. Uh, abiogenéza, tak to nazývame po slovensky, biogenéza, uh, nehovoríme panspermia, ale panspermizmus a directed znamená smerovaný, smerovaný panspermizmus. OK, so let's move on. And uh, now there is uh, one video that you are going to watch, uh, watch in uh, in your assignment uh, for uh, for uh, your quarantine. There is short video over the YouTube. I will uh, stop the uh, I will stop uh, the sound. Maybe I can put it and you can hear it for a while. The monkey trial. In 1925, biology teacher John Scope spiraled to fame in the legal battle that became known as the Monkey Trial. Okay, the Monkey Trial generally it was uh, one one small, uh, almost unimportant, unimportant, uh, unimportant. Uh, 
argument among the biology teacher at one local elementary school uh, and uh, in which a local preacher, a priest uh, and a lawyer uh, and uh, the mayor of the town, the mayor of the city uh, were arguing whether to teach or not to teach Darwinism at biology classes at their school. Because in USA schools are financed, uh, are bunged by uh, by the local communities, authorities, so uh, the parents and uh, the city councils feel a uh, big responsible uh, also about the choosing the content of what you teach, what is being taught at uh, schools and in this case uh, in this case uh, they try to actually put the school on a trial and this teacher for teaching Darwin's evolution theory at biology and history because it denies the Bible. Uh, actually, it was very funny because uh, it turned out to be turned out to be very important because presidential uh, presidential uh, uh, law in America, just like in the UK, says that if there hadn't been any other uh, decision made by uh, court in a trial had done before, it must be done uh, for the first time and it should be repeated uh, in other states, in all the like, uh, nation, in all the country. So suddenly this small trial turned out to be very important uh, trial for all the USA, whether accept Darwinism or creationism, whether to believe science or to believe the Bible. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about the, uh, the result of uh, of this of this trial because you are going to study it uh, and I, I would say similar like Solomon's uh, decision of a, of a judge in this case uh, so you will watch it and you will analyze it for yourself but I can tell you that it's not uh, it's not so funny at all it's not so funny at all 26 minutes you have to be uh, a bit faster in this case uh, it's not so funny because uh, it still uh, influences uh, things uh, in America in, even today and these kind of trials uh, are going on in many states and towns and cities until today what to teach or not to teach uh, those who came from religious schools so probably if you were learning about biology or uh, uh, maybe history about anthropogenesis and the creation of life uh, so that was uh, really uh, interesting in this case so these questions will be case for you uh, what i want to point at is one other opposition thing that in europe uh, well we in european union we value uh, uh, accepting of all the religions and uh, everybody's individual's uh, opinions uh, so in uh, austria one guy uh, one guy uh, wanted to mock uh, this uh, Christian fundamentalist in USA uh, who were refusing Darwinism at schools and as an irony he started to wear uh, silt uh, for pasta on his head and he actually took a photo for his ID uh, and when the police like us like is mocking this like uh, ID license uh, he said, no, that is just a religious symbol because he's a believer, this creationist movement, that uh, life was created by some supernatural being, but not by the God, but by a uh, flying spaghetti monster. As you can see, uh, this ironic, uh, funny picture that this um, paraphrases of, uh, of Michelangelo Buonarroti, cre creation of a man from uh, Sistine Chapel in Vatican, Rome. Uh, in Italy, uh, and he said that this um, FSM that start this actually established the church in Austria later in other countries too are uh, also creationists and they support uh, Christians and other religions that yeah we should accept this, each other. But you can see that on one side you should accept it, on the other side it's um, just the, just the theory. One thing to to tell those who believe uh, in God like don't be offended right now because still the thing is that. When we come to the point, uh, uh, when we go back to the point, which of all these, which of all these theories, are actually talking about uh, uh, about evolution and which are about emergence of life, about ev uh, evolution of almost all of them, about emergence of life, how it was created, only two of them, and that is creationism, that cannot be denied, but 
uh, denied in, in this personal fate, but we know that the, there was no life like created in 30, uh, 36, 76 uh, BC, you know, and uh, they had, there had been life before. So probably it happened in a very different way, and probably it uh, was created in the way how apogenesis is. But on the other hand, unless we uh, don't discover uh, some place where the life is being created at some volcano under the water or maybe in Mars, maybe in Jupiter, uh, when we cannot uh, uh, make an experiment, maybe in the lab with this, and we cannot create, mix some stones and some some mud, you know, and suddenly create some bacteria from it. So uh, we cannot prove it. So that, may, uh, that makes uh, a lot of... Uh, let's say even physicists uh, believe that uh, not not majority definitely not, not major majority are atheists but uh, many people are still believers but they are more like pantheists in the way that maybe the god is something that was like the sparkle at the be beginning that uh, give this life and change it from the mud to bacteria and created his first early life and make me started the big bang and that is actually one of the beginnings of the universe as we know it and if you know the big bang theory uh, if you watch it so you know the sheldon cooper uh has this uh strings theory in which they said there are parallel universes and um, like thousands of them and there are many histories of them for all of them so this is more more, more about physics and chemistry chemistry and mathematics combined but this is the beginning of the place where we stay so let's move to the place when already uh, uh, when it is already being discovered and what can we really track back and thanks to physics and astrophysics and thanks to chemistry and thanks to photo cameras and so on we know that uh, the universe itself was created maybe uh, during this big bang uh, about like 14 billion years ago vietiež uh, billion v angličtine znamená miliarda nie billion pozor na to 14 miliard rokov the universe as we know it uh, the solar system so our our star sun and then the planets around it were created about like 5 million billion years ago and that would be also the beginning of our planet Earth, which was actually at the beginning small, maybe bunch of rocks around, flying around and hitting together, hitting together, creating also a uh, kind of gravity and weight and uh, uh, maybe this hot uh, heat, uh, hidden core and attracting more gravity and more, more uh, matters from all around the universe. Uh, what we call and how we divide it, so we got a couple of periods of this uh, history of the Earth. That's why we call it geological or natural history. Because when we talk about geo, uh, logi, geology, you know, logos, geos, geos, it's Earth. Logos is science. Science is about Earth. Geology says only the history of the Earth, of the planet itself. Natural, it's biology. So you see that again, we got like the various uh, uh, things in here, but it's still it's history of it. So what does it say? The first early phase or stage or period of uh, our Earth uh, is called Archean Age. Archean Age, Posolonsky uh, Prahori, most like four billion years ago. This is geological, but at the same time, after like half billion years, so it means like 500 million years, uh, obviously water uh, emerged uh, and early atmosphere on our planet and in the seas, in the seas, uh, first life appeared and there was this bacteria or cyanobacteria which means they were uh, they created using this amino acids near this underwater, uh, deep water volcanoes started to be here. This was the early life, the first life. So that's why we can talk also about natural or biological history of the earth. Second phase was called Proterozoic, Proterozoic or Starohori, where this all bacteria evolved and their many forms and all these animals, so many various forms, among them very famous trilobits, as you know them, these guys. Okay, let's go on. Palo, you know, Palo, it means old uh, in Greek. Palozoic, uh, we call Pravohori for Slovensky, and we got it said more precisely like uh, 540 million to 250 million years uh, ago uh, the reason is that during this Paleozoic uh, uh, there was enough water on the planet Earth and as you will see in one GIF picture 
there was uh, at this moment there was a super huge continent created where the plates of the continents uh, like not floating but moving according like how the uh, how the uh, maybe the the nutshell of of the earth is moving you know so these plates were got together and created one super huge continent we call it pangea pangea or pangea pan you know it's all and girls it's earth so pangea kufshezen or like complete like all earth uh you will see that and it means that suddenly in many parts of this pangea they were quite like landlocked seas they were being evaporated and animals living in this uh, seas for about this 300 million years uh in the lack of water with different uh, saltality with different uh, acidity of water or with um, less of uh, water and more oxygen from air somehow they start to learn to go to the surface above the water and gradually some of them mutated and evolved in the form that allowed them to breathe also in the earth uh, created lungs for them and this is how from the fishes the first reptiles uh, evolved and start to climb on the earth like homer simpson from these things uh, got to to these uh, like land animals uh, among them they start to evolve very quickly and uh, uh, Apart from these guys, uh, if apart from these guys, uh, they were evolving also in the in the seas. Of course, in the super huge oceans, there were many like huge animals, various things. Uh, among these, uh, the oldest animals appeared. I picked up sharks, which are actually the oldest animals living on the earth. But I may be surprised that even turtles appeared in this form. Sea turtles are really huge. The other thing that appeared and looks like very different, from, not like not from our world are actually insects with very different structure of biological body and so on so this was another great thing that uh, appeared on our earth and provided a lot of biological material to create atmosphere also on the surface uh, for other animals to come then we got mesozoic period poslonsky druohory which is again like limited very precisely up to 65 million years plus minus uh, this is called the age of dinosaurs despite a thing that Mesozoic had three periods and dinosaurs were living only in one of them. Uh, I will show you the picture and you'll see that then. Uh, what makes that actually they were reptiles during this period the first mammals appeared and became common but they were pretty small uh, like horses at those times were as big as maybe like a big rat for example. Uh, then we had this Cenozoic period and this is period after the extinction of dinosaurs uh, and coming to the arrival of uh, humans. So we got mammals, we got actually period of birds, uh, they were the biggest predators in this one time. Primates appearing in here and first genus, genus rot, you know this word, homo. Homo, uh, it means trollic in Latin, human, homo. That's a homo, I not sure. Like, quote from the Bible that is of, like suddenly it appeared and it's in here. Now, since now uh, we are ended up what we call this geological and natural history of the earth, and we start to talk about history of humans because anthropos in Greek it means human, genesis is creation and evolution. So, anthropogenesis is the human evolution so how to finish this part is to show you a couple of pictures so this is history of the earth from Pangea to continent so this is the moment when there was Pangea that was the moment and again the plates started to got together but the moment one give me a moment so this was the one we got a couple of continents creating moving from the south to the path let's say there was one part that was called Eurasia and that was called Gondwana You'll see that in a moment. And when it's separated again, it starts to hit. You know that, for example, elephants or tigers and lions are living actually in very similar continent, subcontinent. So look at this, for example. Let's look at Gondwana. That is uh, actually South America, Africa, but also India. And as you will see for a moment, for a couple of hundreds of million years in Cenozoic, that was the moment you got Africa, and India separate it was too fast, so let me again give me a moment. And they were very similar animals living, like say camels, llamas. Okay, 
So India separating from Africa, Africa from Latin America, Eurasia still holding, keeping together, but very different. As you can see that uh, clash of Eurasia and uh, uh, India, for example, created the Himalayas. So it's actually year, millions years, and this is really an in incredible, interesting thing. Okay, Pangea. So let's move on. Uh, this is an old presentation. You will see divided picture of these that I decided to put together. A very easy graphic uh, design uh, program that uh, shows these uh, things. So, from late Precambrian part, which is this Archean age with uh, single cell living animals coming to, yeah, you can see like kind of SpongeBob stuff and jellyfish. And here there are trilobites, guys, and first fishes, and the first plants, and uh, corals, first amphibians, obojivalniki, insects. And this is all Paleozoic, you know, these times of Pangaea. And tree like stems, so we've been conifers and trees and so on insects evolving some of them still like soul flies that's why there is soul fly in here reptiles evolving in, in dinosaurs and living in oceans but also on the land some of them extincting some of them evolving into birds and then reviving like crocodiles and uh, some of them changing to mammals and from egg laying to uh, birth giving uh, mammals and humans. Okay, for those who uh, prefer not uh, uh, horizontal but vertical style, so here is another one that also gives you all the eras of Mesozoic, Paleozoic, a uh, lot Preterozoic, and also to uh, the part. Actually, we are living in the uh, period that we call Schwartori Quaternary or Neogene. And Neogene is actually part that we call about that uh, these years, although the planet is. Uh, influenced by us, by humans. Okay, what to say? From the Mesozoic period, uh, also one thing to show you, that there were three periods, they were called Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous. Možno ste počuli a poslenské zaujímavé vyjadrenie, že obdobie Triasu, Jury a Kriedy. Trias, Jura a Krieda. And only Jurassic was this part in the period of very famous dinosaurs that about like 62 million years ago, 65 million years ago, they extinct probably because of uh, this falls of um, these asteroids and meteorites. So uh, that was this Jurassic age and Jurassic part of, of Steven Spielberg. But I can, uh, t I have to tell you one important thing. 42 minutes, možem pokračovat. Výborně. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, uh, Steven Spielberg was inspired and I have to, uh, probably you will show it, if not I will give you all uh, this movie in, uh, uh, yeah, I will show this one, uh, movie that is of Czechoslovak production from 1950s, mid 1950s, by very super famous uh, director Karel Zeman. Uh, who made one of earliest, one of the first uh, trick movies ever. You may be laughing about this, but this is really cool if you count that it. it happened only like 10 years after the uh, Second World War. And it says uh, like very nice, uh, very nice, uh, very nice story of uh, four boys <laughs> from che Czechoslovakia who are just like floating the river and some like sci-fi magical things they are floating back to the uh, history and they can see uh, like ice age mammoths and this is interesting of course they are surviving various adventures this may be funny but um, young steven spielberg as a kid was watching this movie all around and he couldn't believe how somebody can film it and he was dreaming he can do the same thing and he was not able to nobody maybe clash of the titans from 1980s was the first that was a bit closer to these tricks uh, uh things but only when computers are able to do that so in 1990s the Jur jurassic park was the first movie with dinosaurs and it was kind of a tribute to Podsta for carl zeman from steven spielberg for this so uh it's actually maybe funny, ridiculous, but what I can tell you guys that in this way, these guys, uh, Karel Zemani, fulfilled all historical knowledge of those times. Druhá věc, ještě kterou vám ukáže, Karel Zeman spolupracoval ještě se s námi světovým ilustrátorem, uh, kterého vám potom ještě, kterého vám potom ještě ukážeme, a taky stojí 
oni preslávili. Dobre, a pozrime sa na to, čiže ja si musím kontrolovať už priebežne čas, 44 minút. Dobre, uh, so let's move on, guys. So we were in here. Uh, ok, so period of dinosaurs in here. Very quickly we can also go through a human prehistory, because this is probably no thing for you. And here, uh, let's get it, what do you need to know for my history test and for assignments and for history. Anthropogenesis is simply evolution of uh, a man, of a humankind. Still, we have uh, more names for it. Uh, generally, in history uh, and in archaeology, we don't call it anthropogenesis because it is evolution of a human from this biological point of view. From historical and archaeological point of view, it is more important how these guys uh, in the history were able to make and create things because this is kind of inventions and progress that are making history different from prehistory and things important for us for the evolution of them. that that uh, we call it stone age which is not very i would say correct word the back and now because they were not like the flintstones of course uh using like only like stone everything and they were using more wood but what survived from this period the surviving evidence of the past uh was actually stone and uh let's say stone uh tools and stone objects if there were any other uh, the first period of the stone age that we call the like early stone age is called paleolithic and you know it's called neskorolo dera staršia doba kamenna and it lasted for all this period of evolution so we made it like historians and archaeology is very easy because we put like a whole evolution of human Yeah, you may actually argue that I heard that the humans are not 2.5 but 3.6 million years old or even 4 million years old or somebody may claim that no, 400 or 200,000 years. Where is the truth? The truth is that all of them are correct whether which species do you claim to be <laughs> and if we are ancestors of one of these, which are these? We know what uh, we know that probably not many survive and they are very small uh, genetical Uh, traces that can track us uh, to the guys from early things. That's why I don't mention Australopithecus or many other previous forms, but I start with mud later, but this 2.5 million years uh, human species they called Homo habilis. In English they don't call him anyhow, my ho po slovensky voláme Homo habilis, Homo znamená teda človek, habilis it's adjective and in slow it means hand, habea it means to have something to hold, habeam znamená mať a habili znamená taký, ktorý má niečo drží v ruke. When you can hold something, you can operate uh, with thing and you can use it, so you're probably handy, skilled. It means that uh, you're not like shimpu, you know, even raven can use tools, but think that raven or shimpu or, or gorilla cannot adjust it, you cannot process it, they are not able of this. Only these guys, humans, were actually clever enough with big brain enough uh to process some of these stone tools in the form that was really useful they could like kill somebody process it cut it to the pieces and and eat it when you have meat with smaller parts you have much, much better nutrition and your muscles can grow but also your brain because you got enough nutrition for this so probably that was also the thing that how these human species became what we call hunters and gatherers and their means of living just possible života was hunt and gathering and picking up let's say things they found but hunt is very important eat meat so predators in this way uh, another form doesn't mean that they can be like descendants you will see later on was homo erectus again let's analyze it uh, let's learn some latin homo človek erectus try to guess it. what does it mean erectus it means to erect to go up uh, It means that the Homo habilis maybe didn't look very much like a human or something between an ape and human, and he was handy, but he was still going like 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 this, you know. But uh, Homo erectus uh, somehow during the this evolution was upright, so his spine from the uh, from the behind, I'm not sure if I can show it. Uh, he, he was spine and he was upright, you know. So his spine, his back part. Not like my, my ponytail only uh, got upright. Uh, there are two things that are important. One is that uh, you, you are taller uh, than the others. You can see, for example, above the grass. 
Uh, the other thing that the, these guys probably climb down from the trees and try to uh, be fast uh, and uh, hunt in the grasslands, not in rainforests of, let's say, Central Africa or those plateaus. And the reason was that these guys somehow uh, learned how to start a fire. And um, you know that fire in the nature can bring you most commonly from volcanoes and from the lightning bolts. But these guys learn how to make, how to uh, crash uh, and make sparkles from stones, and uh, how to make it maybe with a wooden uh, wooden uh, stick or with small like bow, and uh, with uh, rubbing it they can create the fire. Uh, thanks to fire, you can uh, actually roast this meat you can uh, digest it much easily you can uh, hunt it you can actually this is very important to preserve it for many many days uh, later on and thanks to fire you can smoke it and you can travel for many miles to find better climate better safer places warmer places or colder places how the climate is changing and that's why these guys are very successful homo erectus je človek spriamený and they spread from africa they spread from africa due in this period uh, very quickly i just check out the time guys sorry okay nine minutes so i think we can get it very quickly in here uh the other guys uh for example homo sapiens but if there are two homo sapiens sapiencia znamená mudrosť Človek múdry, človek rozumný, ako my oficiálne nazvem. But there are two guys, as you can see. Homo sapiens Neandertalensis. Neandertal is the valley of Neander. This is a valley in Germany. Where the first uh, rem remains of a guy that we call Neandertals were found. These guys were the cleverest, they were the most clever guys by the time. And obviously not only the size of their uh, brain that we know thanks to finding from Slovakia, from Ganoce pri Poprade. But actually other things that they were guys who were doing first burials, prvé pohreby, it means probably they knew each other, they valued them, they had some ideas about maybe afterward something, probably they could communicate without any problems. Uh, caves, okay, I have to erase it, they were not living, everybody was living in caves at those times, but they actually put some... Uh, for example, fireplaces, they actually try to draw something on the, on the cave walls. Uh, these guys were actually uh, were able to uh, take care of the sick and also to uh, heal some injuries. They able, they knew that uh, if you are like got broken uh, skull, for example, they're covering. It's called trepana trepanation of skull, trepanatia lepki. They're able to do that. Uh, actually, the, some they found this one guy who got like cut uh, eye, uh, but he was uh, like being searched with this uh, gray. Uh, I don't know how to call it, in great uh, dark, you know, how to call it, I'm not sure. But what happened? These uh, Neanderthalases, they appear like uh, uh, pretty late, uh, about like uh, 500,000 uh, years ago, and they lived in Europe very long, for many years, until like 70 or 60,000 years ago. And when we uh, count the time when Homo sapiens sapiens, Človek mudrý, mudrý, rozumný, rozumný, as we call ourselves, came from Africa again. We were, we were, we were black uh, in the past. All of, all of our um, uh, ancestors were black at the beginning. Uh, we call also, according to Cro-Magnon, uh, that is cave in France, where the, the, all these remains of these Homo sapiens, sapiens were found. Či Cro-Magnon, si ho Cro-Magnonský človek, le living hand in hand, maybe not in peace all the time but in conflicts but for about like uh, 200,000 years and there are nice uh, theories how they uh, try to live in harmony symbiosis maybe because of diseases some of these uh, were surviving but obviously when find the climate changed uh, dramatically during the last ice ages so finally homo sapiens neanderthalensis died out uh, what are we Cro-Magnon people different from neanderthals as homo stoop species homo sapiens was uh, that we had this ritual bar uh, we had uh, bone and obsidian tools, but I can tell you that was the same thing that Neanderthals had. What was the only difference? But we had probably different uh, uh, sculpture, maybe different muscles, uh, and maybe we were not uh, 
we are maybe only numerous, uh, and so on. So in this way, when you see this graph from whom Ergaster, that is this Homo habilis, uh, in this graph, you see that how in Africa and Asia tried to spread, it didn't work, how Homo erectus moved and actually survived, not in Africa, but in Asia. But as you see, they didn't survive. They died out in the times when Homo sapiens was already coming to Europe, you know, guys so this is incredible at this moment they were living this uh homo sapiens neanderthalans is uh, upcoming homo sapiens living in asia in borneo in indonesia homo erectus uh, homo rhodensiensis they're very tiny small like pygmy people then if africa homo sapiens our ancestors and in Europe, already Homo Neanderthalans, it said that you can recognize Neanderthalans mm, descendants combined like about 3% of DNA, of gene genealogical DNA is still there. And actually made me as a young student of history believe, got a hypothesis, probably they were not killing each other, but Neanderthalans, these and Chromium people were having love together and kids together. And there are 3% of Neanderthal DNA in um, some European populations. Some people said that you you have these eyebrows big like this so it probably means that you had some Neanderthal people like about 50 60,000 years ago or something like that uh, what is maybe interesting th that you have some other information in here and maybe from Australopithecus which is not a Latinsky Australus znamená južný Pithecus opica coming to Homo habilis and what we'll look at this about from front teeth especially the brain size 500 square uh, cubic centimeters, 700 Homo erectus, 1000, one liter, excellent, and that tall, 1450 Cro-Magnon, 1400, yeah, it's true, and that tall people had bigger brain than we had. Does it mean they were more clever? Maybe. Does it mean they were, they were uh, wiser than we were? Maybe it's true, we don't know. Uh, what biology said that probably it's more important how many uh, connections are there in the brain, Mozgova Zaviti. Uh, maybe Krom Neanderthal they did have it. Uh, maybe they had it. But actually, for like 10 years ago, there were uh, uh, there were discussions whether Neanderthal were able to speak when uh, if they were able to speak today we think that they had to know how to speak probably they had some primitive art but it didn't just proceed it and probably this is the thing that only the numbers prevailed and changing in climate which made uh, Cro-Magnon people prevailing and during these uh, centuries and millennia uh, a skin of these uh, Cro-Magnon people mixed up a bit with Neanderthal got much much lighter but in Asia it didn't it got more to brown uh, color uh, our eyes uh, got uh, a different shape for example with different colors in Europe uh, but uh, the without like a lot of Sun and a lot of moisture it went more to uh, like uh, green color for example but the red it went uh, hair red uh, went red uh, in uh, inlands they were still dark uh, by the seat went more to blonde you know and uh, blue eyes for example but in Asia it's still like uh, they were like not curly hair uh, like curly hair but like a straight hair and also the shape of eyes was uh, was a bit different uh, of course, sometimes these changes are really not so successful, they don't work and maybe they are okay within the rainforest. And that's why we're still not sure how this uh, Darwinist evolution theory uh, moves on and uh, what is the, the system, the method, because it doesn't seem very useful, doesn't seem very okay. And sometimes just preference maybe of some populations, maybe presence of disease that makes us survive or not. And this is how evolution maybe <laughs> May come to the point. Uh, may come to the point that uh, we know from uh, from primates and early humans uh, to guys who are working in the fields and in mines and factories and today by the computers. Yeah, this is computer from previous years. So please don't be all the time at the mobile phones during the quarantine. Uh, don't be at the, in front of the TV. Please go outside. Uh, when it's not raining, it's beautiful outside, still in the rain, it's really nice, misty, beautiful forest. So go out, uh, look around and 
you will be given also task to go out uh, to look for uh, the nearest, the closest archaeological site. Uh, takže toto je prvá úloha, ktorú uh, môžete už začať hľadať, o ktorej som vám ja ešte nepovedal, ale bude v zadaní, ktoré vám príde možno budúci týždeň uh, k praveku a to bude najbližšie vaše archeologické nálezisko, ktoré máte vyhľadať uh, cez internet a skúsiť ho naštíť sa, dostať možno blízko, nie samozrejme na, na ne, ale prísť a nejako zdokumentovať možno informačné tabule, možno sa bude dať niečo odfotiť, minimálne pohľadať nejaké informácie o tom a odfotiť sa na tom niekde blízko pri tom mieste od hradu, hradiska cez opetisko to môže byť čokoľve jaskyňa a tak ďalej takže na tomto minimálne môžete decka pracovať ak už ste hotoví s zadaním z úvodu do diepisu dúfam, že vás to teda bavilo dobre, na budúce budeme pokračovať s ďalšími vecami, ktoré tu máme Áno a začneme, pôjdeme na týchto mamutov, lovcov mamutov, čiže už pôjdeme potom na mezolit a palolit, budeme si podrobnejšie hovoriť lokality, naleziska a tak ďalej. Ten úvod máme teda za sebou, decka. Uh, OK, uh, I think that's all. Skontrolujem si čas. No jasné, 32 sekúnd, takže to je odo mňa všetko, deti moje, no a a pozdravuje vás Sandra, a tak môžete jej napísať niečo pekné, nech môžem prečítať potom pod obrázky. Toto videjko vám vešiam 5. novembra, ja, ako vidíte, ja tu mám 4. novembra, môj hlas prežil, ešte dnes ráno som mal horúčku 38, tak som rád, že sa mi to podarilo. No, každopádne hodinu sledujte a ja si účasť kontrolujem tak, že som vám nejaké otázky zadal a na, pod linkom na Facebooku, takže tam mi prosím reagujte, budem možno trošku tolerantný, ale nechajte to, nechajte to čakať príliš dlho, alebo vás potom zapíšem. Dobre, ďakujem, dúfam, že sa vám hodina páčila, no, majte sa, no, pekný deň. Uh, stay positive in mind and uh, negative in your COVID test. Bye bye.